Hey guys, and welcome to another Gravy's Brew Review. Homebrewing for beginners, with me, Gareth Goes Gravy. And for this one, as you saw from the title at the beginning, as you can see from the title below, but not by my uh, surroundings just yet, it's brew day. And for this one, I'm going to be brewing my first all grain beer. <laughs> uh, and for it, as you saw from the title at the beginning, as I said, I'm going to be bringing you, excuse me, a Crafty Brews Stove Topper Session Pail. Let's give you a quick look at that label. And there are the particulars. A 4 litre batch at 4.8% ABV. Um, now, I must admit, um, I did get the idea for this from a question that a friend and subscriber of mine asked a little while ago uh, in terms of uh, home brewing. The uh, question I was asked was, was there a way to brew smaller batches of beer? Uh, at the time I said I wasn't too sure, but uh, thanks to a couple of home brewers here on YouTube, um, I came across this kit, um, don't think I mentioned it, uh, from the UK based website brewuk.co.uk, I'll pop a link down there in the description, and I thought while I was at it I would give you a little look at what an all grain beer uh, entails, or what it entails in terms of actually brewing. As I said, link to uh, the Brew UK website will be down in the description. I'll actually post a specific link to this particular uh, kit so that you can have a look at it for yourself. Um, and first off, as always, you need the instructions. Good bit of kit for you so that you know what you're doing. And, <coughs> excuse me, it tells you everything you need to know as to what you need in order to brew this. Sorry, I'm having to uh, kind of look at this so that I know uh, where, I'm, where I am with this. Um, as you can see there, and as I will show you shortly, shows you the contents of what is in uh, this box along with some equipment you'll need. Now I must admit, uh, what I might do is just slightly different to uh, what the uh, instructions recommend, uh, basically because some of the bits of equipment I have, or, or that is recommended in uh, the instructions, I don't have. So, And with it being an all grain, for flavour and aroma and bitterness, you're going to need hops. Hop pack one, hop pack two, you'll be able to get to see what these look like uh, when it comes to uh, the boil a little later on. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is no indication of what is on, or what is in these packs, on the, on the packs that is, on the labels. Uh, on the website, uh, the page that I have uh, just up at the moment. Um, it doesn't actually specifically say which is which. I have a feeling I know which which one might be which. I don't know yet. Um, the two hot packs contain Citra and Simcoe, one in each. You have a pack of Safale USO5 yeast. Kind of similar to the uh, yeast that I used, the uh, lag yeast that I used in the uh, brown sugar lager last week. Or, well, so last week, a couple of months ago. And last but by certainly no means least, your grain pack. Uh, once again, there is no indication of what is in the pack, uh, grain-wise. According to the uh, Brew UK website, uh, it has crushed caramel, 
Munich malt and Maris Otter malt. Uh, and there is no indication as to how much there is in it. I believe there's around about 870 grams of grains in this. So anyway, that's the uh, that's the kit. Um, so I guess there's no more beating around the bush. I guess I'll uh, just have to get down to uh, the brew. <laughs> Alright guys, well uh, just give me a few moments to set up for the next part. And I'll be right back to get on with the brewing of uh, this pale ale. Alright guys, I'm back. Um, I've now hit my strike water temperature at just over 75 degrees. Um, so let's get on with the next bit, which is to add the grains. Now I did actually check with uh, the with my scales. We are actually looking at around about a kilo of grains uh, in this pack. Not 800 as I originally thought, but anyway, let's get these dumped in here. This is what brewers call doing in, which is to basically add the grains to the mix. Now unfortunately as you could probably see, uh, these grains are clumping up rather quickly. So a bit of a constant stir is needed for this. I'll get the rest of these in. So that's that. And once I've got these uh, grains all nicely mixed and they're all uh, submerged in the water, what I'm going to do is I will check the temperature uh, with a bit of luck without the heat on it should be around about 60 to 65 degrees 65 is actually the desired temperature that I'm needing here right now I might be stirring these just a bit too much but uh, oh, too much is uh, better than too little <laughs> take my thermometer still looking at 72 degrees so what I'm going to do guys is I'm just going to give these a stir for a little while longer, might try and get the uh, temperature down to the uh, desired mash temp, and then uh, I'll see you in an hour for the next bit. See you in a bit, guys. All right, guys, we're back. Um, it's been just over an hour since I uh, started the mash um, I've managed to maintain the temperature of the mash around about uh, 64 degrees 62 to 64 which hopefully won't be too bad uh, as you can see also hopefully um, during the uh, 
last few minutes I have prepared the next bit which is what they call the sparge basically what I have to do is just take off any remaining uh, sugars that may be in the grains just take a couple of litres of water the, the instructions recommend four litres I think I've probably got around about two or three litres here just let the uh, water drain through you're not exactly going to be looking at a whole lot of uh, sugars being uh, used for this or being extracted for this just run that water through the grains as I said I think I'm going to have to uh, stop there because this pot is getting pretty full and then much like uh, before I'll just lift that up and just see what comes out if anything I think we're looking at very minimal uh, amounts of sugars and waters here so I'm going to put the grains and this colander to the side because now very shortly we will be adding the hops first things first I've got to get the uh, the wort here up to a rolling boil and once we've uh, got that rolling boil we can begin to add, add our hops and we have to wait for another hour so um, just give this a few minutes to start to boil and we'll be right back alright guys we're back and as you can see now I've hit the rolling boil so it's time to add our hop additions hop pack one as I said I'm not entirely too sure which it will be I would feel it will be the uh, Simcoe I really couldn't tell you by smell but ooh, it smells very nice I'll be enough to come on out you come well, there we go that's them all out And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this for an hour to uh, infuse the hops. Yes, another hour. And when that's done, we'll be back uh, to finish off by adding hot pack two, and I think you know the rest. So. I'll see you in another hour. Alright guys, we're back. It was uh, a good hour. Uh, as you can see, the uh, boil is now done. So, all that is now left to do, I will uh, take that off of the heat in a minute. Well, I've turned the burner off. All that's left to do now is to add Ooh, I'll 
Lovely. All that's left to do now is to add hot pack number two. Go on, out you get again. I think that's all of them. My apologies for having to uh, use my hands to uh, get those hops out. I'll have to do. I'll just give that a quick stir. Now I'm going to leave this for about maybe 10 minutes. Let the uh, hops infuse. The second hop pack that is. And then in between times I'm going to uh, stick this pan in a in the sink with hot water, with cold water excuse me I need to get this down now to a temperature of around about 20 degrees because um, quite simply enough it is just about time to uh, pitch the yeast um, as I said I'm just going to let this infuse for about 10 minutes or so maybe a little longer um, get the temperature down again as I said to around about 20 degrees uh, transfer it to the uh, fermenter and uh, pitch the yeast I'll also do a gravity reading I will be back for that final part I can't leave you hanging uh, with the uh, just up to this bit I will finish everything off uh, but for now again I'll be right back alright guys well we're back for the final part um, the wort is now chilled down to I think 22 degrees the instructions say to get it down to around about 20 again I've got 22 degrees there or thereabouts for this wort. So all that's left to do now is to uh, pop it into the uh, fermenter, fermenter, take a gravity reading and pitch the yeast. And one other thing I've got with us, second one while I've been doing this brew uh, today is a home brew. Cheers. Cooper's English better. Lovely. Anyway. <clears throat> I don't know how well you can see it. I've got my fermenter here. And I've also just got a colander that I'm hopeful will catch the uh, hops uh, whilst I uh, strain this through. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything else. So here we go. see the amount of hops that has been left here guys <laughs> it's actually uh, quite crazy I probably should have actually had a muslin bag or maybe another strainer I do have another I do have some other paint strainers um, Lying around that I probably really should have used to uh, collect these hops, but anyway, it doesn't matter because they're all going in the bin. I'll just put that over there for a minute. And another the thing the instructions say is that I am allowed to top this up
Uh, where are we? Yeah, I can uh, top up using uh, water to to the uh, five and a half liters. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Mix of hot and cold. That I think will probably be probably be around about 22 degrees. sanitized. It's actually looking pretty decent for a first go. So we might be looking at around about, can't see this, I'd say. And let's just get a proper temperature. about 24 degrees Ooh, a little on the low side 3.2 percent I'm not actually disappointed with that considering uh, this is my first attempt at an all grain I'm actually uh, I'm actually quite pleased with that 
to say, as I've said, you know, this is my first oil grain. And I have gotten the, uh, you know, I've managed to do it hopefully. And so all that's left to do is to pitch the yeast. Now the instructions say to pitch only half the pack. I think I'm actually going to throw the whole lot in. Um, because I don't really have any other kits lying around to be able to do another small batch. So I'm just going to pop that on there. Hopefully try and get the rest of that yeast out. Whatever's left in there. And for the moment I'm just going to pop on the lid. Alright guys, well this final part of the video took a little bit longer than what I hoped. Uh, I do apologise for the length. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video guys. Um, as I said at the top of the video, um, I'm going to pop a link to uh, brewuk.co.uk, the specific link to where I purchased this kit and to what the kit is. Um, and if you're interested in getting it, again, link will be down there. Uh, I must admit, uh, I only know that this is a UK based website. I haven't really looked into this uh, website uh, much. Um, so I don't know if they uh, deliver overseas. Um, I'm sure that anybody that might be watching this that is from uh, anywhere else in the world, you'll be able to find packs similar to this. Alright guys, well, <laughs> that's all I've got for you for now. So, until next time. From Gravy's Brew Review, <laughs> this has been Gareth Gus Gravy. I'll see you later. Cheers.